At the time of the Reformation in the 16th century, one of the things which Luther leveled against the Catholic Church was that it was concentrating far too much on good works to get to heaven and overlooking St. Paul's words in Scripture when he says, It is only by faith alone that one is saved. Well, actually the Scriptures themselves never mention the word alone. And this brings up the whole question of Catholics and the Bible. Catholics are Bible Christians, but in order to interpret them correctly, we need the guidance of the Church. We never read the Scriptures only in the context of the Church and its teaching. In the Gospel today, St. Matthew tells us that there must be a blend of faith and action when he says... Let the light of your faith shine among men and women so that seeing your good works they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. The praise to your Father in heaven, that's what I'm concentrating on here. If God is afforded the glory, then the salt of our faith won't become tasteless or the light grow dim. We won't, for instance, be craving the limelight like some people do. St. Therese of Lisieux said, If we go through life without anyone noticing our good deeds, so much the better. God loves little souls, she says, who offer him the hidden sacrifices of day-to-day -day living. The light of many people's good works shine out all the time, but they're scarcely aware of it. It's very part of the very nature. It's who they are. And they might even be oblivious to the change they're making in people's lives. On the other hand, if we say we have faith and our good deeds are few and far between, then we are putting the lamp of our faith under the proverbial tub, as Jesus said. Further on in the Bible, St. James says that faith without good works is dead. At the last judgment, we'll be judged on good works, not on pious thoughts or sentiments, or even knowing the Bible inside out. There are other ways that the salt of our faith becomes tasteless. We are supposed to love Christ and his church. But sometimes we can be overcritical of the church, forgetting that it's the body of Christ we are demeaning. Incidentally, it was the church founded by Christ which brought the light of civilization to the barbarians. Without the church, the light of our faith would be somewhat reduced and could even go out altogether. Another way the metaphorical salt becomes tasteless is when we're not earthed into the local parish community but operating as a kind of freelance Catholic. We go church hopping on a Sunday with little or no involvement in our local parish community. I call that service station religion which leaves a lot to be desired. When Jesus was sending out his disciples to preach and heal, he instructed them not to move from house to house. Your involvement in the parish house, however small, is invaluable. Even Jesus needed the company and friendship of the apostles to fulfil his mission. He didn't plough a lone furrow. Another way the salt of our faith can become insipid is when we pick and choose certain teachings of our Lord and his church and disregard others. St. Paul's letter to Timothy puts it like this, For the time will come, he said, when men will not tolerate sound doctrine, but with itching ears they will gather around themselves teachers to suit their own desires. Jesus says, Let the light of your faith shine out. Keeping it hidden is not an option. Now, thank you very, very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.